بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يدلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم يا أيها الذين آمنوا تقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس تقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يسلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهج هج محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة My talk will be centered around rules and regulations for the Muslim who has been afflicted with a calamity. And without a doubt, a person having good health is a ni'mah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he mentioned, نِعْمَتَانْ مَغْبُونْ فِيهِمَا كَثِيرٌ مِنَ النَّاسِ الصِّحَّةِ وَالْفَرَاضِ That there are two blessings that many from amongst the people they are heedless concerning, and that is good health and free time. And also we have in the statement of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, إِغْتَنَمْ خَمْسًا قَبْلَ خَمْسِ Take advantage of five before five. And one of the things mentioned by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, سِحَّةَ قَبْلَ مَرَضِ Take advantage of your health before your sickness. So good health is a, is a ni'mah from Allah. Good health is something that we should take advantage of. And as the saying goes, health is wealth. But now what happens when the Muslim is afflicted with sickness? Because it happens. We as Muslims are no different from the non-Muslims in this affair, meaning we get sick too. It's not just the non-Muslims who are afflicted with sickness, but we as Muslims, we get sick too. As this is the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The scholars have mentioned that when the Muslim becomes sick, 
it is due to a number of reasons. The first matter, or the first reason, the Muslim can become sick due to that Muslim being negligent and falling short regarding that which Allah has commanded. So the sickness of that Muslim is a punishment for him from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah Azza wa Jal, He mentions in Surah Al-Shura, وَمَا أَصَابَكُمْ مِنْ مُصِيبَةٍ فَبِمَا كَسَبَتْ أَيْدِيكُمْ وَيَعْفُ أَنْ كَثِيرٌ And whatever has befallen you from a calamity, it is from what your own hands have earned, and Allah, He pardons many. Also, we have the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah An-Nisa. وَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ سُوءَ يُجَزَى بِهِ وَلَا يَجِدُ لَهُ مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ وَلِيٌّ وَلَا نَصِيرًا And whoever does evil, he is compensated for that evil. And he will not find for himself any helper or protector or protector or helper besides Allah. So these statements of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows that from the sunnah of Allah is that when people do evil, at times Allah Azza wa Jal punishes, punishes them with a situation that's not good or the person is pleased with or happy with. Rather the person as he has done evil, something evil happens to him. As the Salaf they would say, مَا أَذْنَبْتُ ذَنْبًا إِلَّا رَعَيْتُ عُقُوبَتَهُ فِي بَدَنِي أَوْ أَهْلِي أَوْ مَالِي I have not committed a sin except that I seen the punishment of that sin in my body or in my family or in my wealth. I have not committed a sin except that I have seen the punishment of that sin in my body or in my family or in my wealth. Another reason the scholars they mention why sickness befalls the Muslim that it is a means of expiation for the sins that were committed. As the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he mentioned Ma Yusibul Muslim Min Nasab Wala Wasab Wala Ham Wala Husn ولا أذى ولا غم حتى الشوكة يشاكها إلا كفر الله بها من خطاياه And this narration is collected in the Sahih of Al-Imam Al-Bukhari Do me a favor, pass me the um, Sahih Bukhari, look for Hadith 5641. 5, look at the numbers, 5641. No, 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 just pass the book to me.
Give me seven. Seven? Yeah. This narration is on the authority of Abu Sa'id al Khudri, Abu Huraira, and Abu Huraira radiallahu anhuma, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he mentioned that no fatigue, nor disease, nor sorrow or sadness or hurt or distress befalls a Muslim, even if it were the prick that he receives from a thorn, except that Allah expiates some of his sins for that. So here in this narration, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he mentions that that which the Muslim experiences in his life of hardships and difficulties from tiredness or fatigue, from sickness, disease, from ham or huzn or adha or gham. And the the hem, it is like worrying about that which is going to take place in the future. And al huzn is over that which has already taken place in the past. And al ghum is like that worry and concern and the grief over what's happening at the moment. Sometimes you see these words and they are translated similarly, but there's a difference between Al-Ham, Al-Huzn, and Al-Ghum. Al-Huzn, Lil-Madi. Al-Ghum, Lil-Hadir. Wal-Ham, Lil-Mustaqbil. So the sadness, the Huzn is for that which already has taken place. And the worry, or the Ghum, the distress is for what's happening at the moment. And alham, or the worry, is for that which is in the future. In any event, any type of hardship, as these are just examples the Prophet Wasallam has given, any type of hardship or any type of difficulty that the Muslim is afflicted with, Allah Azawajal removes the sins from the individual. So this is the second reason why Muslims are afflicted with sickness. The third reason mentioned by the ulama is that the sickness is a means of raising the person's level with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the hereafter. As we find in the authentic narration or narration that was declared to be a good narration by Al-Imam Al-Shaykh Al-Albani rahimahullah ta'ala قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم إن الرجل لا يكون له عند الله المنزلة فما يبلغها بعمل فما يزال الله يبتليه بما يقره حتى يبلغه إياها. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he said what means indeed the person he will have a high status with Allah that he did not reach by way of his actions. 
Indeed, the person will have a high status with the law that he did not reach by way of his own actions. Meaning not by way of salah or zakat or hajj or umrah or fasting. He didn't reach it by this. Allah Azza wa Jal did not cease to test him with that which he dislikes until he has reached this level. Meaning that the Muslim has reached this high level that the Prophet Sallallahu is referring to by way of Allah testing him, afflicting him. And from the afflictions is what? Sickness. Also we have the statement of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that's in the Sahih of Imam al-Bukhari مَنْ يُدْرِ اللَّهُ بِهِ خَيْرًا يُصِبْهُ مِنْ That whoever Allah wants good for, He afflicts him from it, meaning from the trials and tribulations, the tests, sickness and the likes. Or another statement of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam إِذَا أَحَبَّ اللَّهُ قَوْمًا إِبْتَلَاهُمْ That when Allah, He loves a people, He tests them. And here's a point, Barakallah Fikum, that I heard and learned and benefited uh, from the likes of a Sheikh Sulaiman Ruhaili and others from the ulama. That when you see a Muslim who outwardly is known to be righteous, when you see a Muslim being afflicted with a sickness or a calamity or some hard times, do not automatically say or think that that Muslim is being punished. Rather have good thoughts about your brother. But when you yourself are going through some type of affliction, then accuse yourself of the shortcomings and the negligence. Don't accuse others of negligence when outwardly they're known to be righteous, but then for yourself, Allah is testing you with punishing the other person. No, you know the stuff that you do as a person. We all know our faults and our shortcomings. So when we are afflicted with difficulties and hardships or sickness and the likes, then we should blame ourselves first and foremost. Don't have good thoughts about yourself but then bad thoughts about others. Rather, it should be the opposite. That you accuse yourself for the shortcoming and as a result of the shortcoming, you believe that what you have been afflicted with is the punishment for your disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As we see that some of the salaf they will say, I have not committed a sin except that I seen as punishment in my physical body or my family or my wealth. This is how the salaf they were. They accused themselves. So when you see that a Muslim who is known for righteousness, and that's the key word, known for righteousness, apparently is upright, that the person is going through something of hardship, difficulty, sickness, or the likes, don't say Allah is punishing that person. Have good thoughts. So now, here's the question. How can a, punish, how can a person distinguish between a punishment and a test? The question for the floor. Sheikh Yusuf. Um, the difference between a punishment and a test? Yeah, how do you distinguish between the two? The disobedient Allah is punished. Accept. And the test is for? For atonement of sin. It's for the righteous. Two texts here. وَمَا أَصَابَكُمْ مِنْ مُصِيبَةً فَبِمَا كَسَبَتْ أَيْدِيكُمْ And whatever has befallen you from a calamity is from what your own hands have earned. That's for the wicked people. Then you have 
مَنْ يُدْلِ اللَّهُ بِهِ خَيْنٌ يُسِبْهُ مِنْ Whoever Allah wants good for, He afflicts him. Meaning, but that's for the righteous people. So a calamity can strike a place. For some of the people in that place, it's a punishment. And for some, it's a test. The punishment will be for the wicked. The test will be for the righteous. Even though it's the same calamity. For sure, for the others to take heed. But the point is that a person, as an example, can be in prison and it's his punishment. And then another person can be in prison and it's a test for them. Like Yusuf alayhi salam. That was a test. Allah, he was innocent. And the likes of Shaykh al Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah. Or you look at the battles that took place between the Muslims and the non Muslims. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa he was injured. He was wounded. That's his punishment? No, of course not. He's the most righteous of the righteous. That's a test for him. But then now, when on the other side, that's their punishment. Although it's the same affair that has afflicted both sides. So the point, Barakallahu Fikum, Allah Azza wa Jal, He causes Muslims to be sick at times as a, as a means of raising their level. And as a means or a sign that Allah, He wants good for the person or that Allah, He loves the person. As Allah Azza wa Jal, He mentions, وَعَاسَىٰ أَن تَقْرَهُ شَيْئًا وَهُوَ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ And perhaps you dislike a thing, but it is better for you. Surah Al-Baqarah, verse 216. If we know that we are individuals who are falling short in our worship of Allah and our obedience of Allah, we should hasten to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, especially if an affliction comes upon us after that disobedience. That's, is a, that is a sign for us to return back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with tawbah. Allah azza wa jalli mentions وَإِنِّي لَغَفَّارٌ لِمَنْ تَابَ وَآمَنَ وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا ثُمَّ اهْتَدَى Surah Taha Indeed, I am all forgiven for the one who repents and believes and do righteous actions and then afterwards is guided. Allah Azza wa Jal, He mentions وَمَنْ تَابَ وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا فَإِنَّهُ يَتُوبُ إِلَى اللَّهِ مَتَابَ Surah Al-Furqan And whoever repents and does righteous deeds, then this is the one who has truly repented. And a beautiful point we have here, that true tawbah is followed up with righteous actions. True tawbah is accompanied and followed up with righteous actions. And the door of Tawbah is open. As the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he mentioned, مَنْ تَابَ قَبْلَ أَن تَطْلُعَ الشَّمْسُ مِنْ مَغْرِبِهَا تَابَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ that whoever repents before the sun rises from the west, then Allah will accept his repentance. Meaning as long as the person 
repents before the time of repentance has elapsed, Allah will accept your tawbah. And the other time is at the time of death, if you repent before you die, Allah will accept your tawbah. As the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned, إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَقْبَلُ تَوْبَةَ الْعَبْدِ مَا لَمْ يُخَرْغِرُ that indeed Allah, He accepts the tawbah of the servant as long as he has not started that gargle of death. But we must repent with the conditions of tawbah. Having sincerity, being a believer, having sincerity, repenting before the time of repentance is up, abandoning the sin, having regret, for what we have done, acknowledging that what we have done is wrong, having the firm resolve not to return back to the sin. And if we violated the rights of anyone giving the person back his or her rights. Another point, Barakallahu Fikum. That when a person is afflicted with physical sickness, for sure one of the things that the person thinks about is will the person become cured? Or how long is the person going to be sick for? The scholars, they mention that two things can ease the sickness of an individual and the worry and the sadness that comes as a result. The first matter, that when you are going through physical sickness, that you are happy that the sickness is not in your religion. For the sickness in the body, it can be a kafara, a means of expiating of your sins. It can be a means of raising your level with Allah Azza wa Jal. That's possible because the person who is sick, he may not or she may not be a sinner. The person may be an upright, righteous individual. So now sickness for that individual is a means of elevation with Allah, is a means of kafara, expiation for anything that may have happened in the past or that which the person may have fallen into. But normally the person is righteous because everyone sins. All of the children of Adam, they constantly fall into error and make sins and commit mistakes, but the best of them are the ones who make tawbah. So when a person is afflicted with physical sickness, a person should be grateful that that sickness is not in his religion. Because when a person is sick in his or her religion, it leads the person to sin, transgression, and punishment at the end. It causes the person to deviate away from the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second matter which can aid the individual in handling one's sickness, that that person's sickness is lighter than someone else who is more sick. And I've shared this with the brothers before some years ago when I was working uh, in the dietary department for the hospitals, 
I used to bring the people their food. This is before I was transferred. And I went to the unit where the people are basically, they're dying from AIDS. And a part of the protocol when you enter into the rooms, you knock, you say good morning, cheerful face, give the people their food. And I remember coming in and there was two individuals and I was given one of them the food and the other one did not have any food, but good morning, how are you? And the guy turned over and looked to the person in the bed next to him. Both are dying now. The guy said, I'm doing better than him. Allah Akbar. The other one, he was clearly on his way out. He turned over and he said, I'm doing better than him. And here, Barakallah Fikum, we have a sunnah from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And this is, in very, this is very important that we implement this. And this narration, Barakallah Fikum, is on the authority of Abi Huraira radiallahu anhu. قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم انظروا إلى من هو أسفل منكم ولا تنظروا إلى من هو فوقكم فهو أجدر أن لا تزدروا نعمة الله عليكم متفق عليه The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he stated Look at the one who is below you, or he has a lesser status or situation than yours. And do not look at the one who is above you, for it is better for you that you do not deny the favor of Allah upon you. The ulama, they mention that this is in the affairs of the dunya. That in worldly matters, don't look at one who is better than you or above you. Health and sickness is from the worldly affairs. So if you're sick, don't look at somebody who has better health than you. If you're sick, rather look at someone whose health is worse than yours so that you can be grateful for what you do have of health. That's the point. Because if you are sick, and then you're looking at those who are not sick, this may cause you to deny the favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon you regarding that which you do have of good health remaining. Okay, you may have an eye ailment, but you can walk, you can talk. You still have your strength. You can touch. You can go to the bathroom by yourself. You're not paralyzed. You don't have a bag connected to your body where your waist goes. You have an eye ailment. Don't look at the one who has 20-20 vision and saying, man, my, I'm going through this hardship right now. Allah is testing me. Man, my eyes, I'm losing my eyesight. Don't complain to the people about what Allah is testing you. Uh, Shaykh al-Islam ibn Qayyim al Jawziyah, rahimahullah ta'ala, he mentioned that there are three types of complaints. One type of complaint is when the person complains to Allah about himself. And that's the best type of complaint. You complain to Allah about you. The other type of complaint is when you 
complain to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about the people. And the third type of complaint, which is the worst type of complaint, is when you complain to the people about Allah. So in the matters of the dunya, look at those who are below you so that you can be grateful for what you have. But in matters of deen, the ulama you say, the ulama they say you look at those who are above you as a means of encouraging you to do better. The next point, Barakallah Fikum, we have a statement from Shuraih Rahimahullah Ta'ala. He stated, Ma asabatni musibatun illa hamidtullah Ta'ala alayha li arba. Never was I afflicted with a calamity except that I praised Allah for four things regarding that calamity. An razaqani as-sabra alayha. The first matter that he praised Allah for, he said that Allah provided me to have patience upon the calamity. He praised Allah for that. Number two, an razaqani al istirja' indaha. The second reason why he praised Allah, he said that Allah provided me to say, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un at the time of the calamity. That we are for Allah, and to Allah we shall return. Number three, the third reason why he praised Allah, he said that Allah did not make the calamity worse than what it is. And number four, Allah. And the fourth matter that Allah did not make the calamity in my religion. And this here, Barakallah Fikum, is a lesson for us that even in times of being afflicted with sickness, there's still something to praise Allah for. And we know that whenever the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he experienced some hardship or discomfort, he would still praise Allah. He would say, Alhamdulillah, ala kulli hal. All praise is due to Allah in all situations. And this is exactly what Aisha radiallahu anha, she described the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with, when she said, كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يذكر الله على كل أحيانه That the Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم, he used to remember Allah in all of his situations. In times of ease, he remembered Allah. In times of hardships, he remembered Allah. This is an example for us. So here we have one of the Salaf saying that he praised Allah for four things regarding the calamity. That Allah gave him patience upon the calamity. That Allah allowed him and gave him the success to say, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'oon. That Allah did not make the calamity worse than what it is, and that Allah did not make the calamity in His religion. (coughs) 
when a person is afflicted with sickness or calamity, one must know and believe that the matter was not going to pass him by. For everything is by the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The good and the bad. As we have in the hadith of Jibreel alayhi salam, he said, فَأَخْبِرْنِي عَلَى iman." Inform me about iman. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he stated, أَن تُؤْمِنَ بِاللَّهِ وَمَلَائِكَتِهِ وَكُتُبِهِ وَرُسُلِهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ وَأَن تُؤْمِنَ بِالْقَدْرِ خَيْرِهِ وَشَرِهِ قال صدقت Jibreel alayhi salam He said to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Therefore inform me about faith And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam He said that faith is that you believe in Allah, His angels, His books, His messengers, the last day, and that you believe in the divine decree, the good of it and the bad of it. Jibreel alayhi salam, he said, you have spoken the truth. So from our belief is that we believe in the qadr of Allah, the good of it and the bad of it. And as Allah Azza wa Jal, He mentions, وَمَا أَفْوَانْ مَا أَصَابَ مِنْ مُسِيبَةٍ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَلَا فِي أَنفُسِكُمْ إِلَّا إِلَّا فِي كِتَابٍ مِنْ قَبْلْ أَنْ نَبْرَأَهَا إِنَّ ذَلِكَ عَلَى اللَّهِ يَسِيرٌ And nothing takes place of a calamity in the earth or within yourselves. Except that it is in a book before we bring it into being, and indeed that is easy upon Allah. Surah Al Hadid. So everything that happens in creation is by the decree of Allah. Everything, good and bad, except that we do not attribute evil to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said what means when he will make dua and evil is not attributed to you. But everything that takes place of good and bad it happens by the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if we say that the good happens by Allah's decree and the bad does not take place by the decree of Allah, then this is the creed of the Qadariyya. This is the, 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 the creed of the Qadariyya. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he mentioned, Al-Qadriya Majus Hadihi Al-Ummah. The Qadriya, they are the Magians of this nation. Why the Magians of this nation? Because the Magians, they believe that there is a God of light and a God of darkness. And all good comes from the God of light, which would be Allah. And all bad comes from the, dark, the God of darkness, which would be Iblis. So now when you say that all good comes from Allah and the evil Allah has not decreed that, then it's as if you're making a different or another God along with Allah who has control over the affairs in the universe. No, Allah is a wajal, He is the one who decreed all matters, good and bad. However, evil is not attributed to Him and it doesn't mean that a person is forced by Allah to do evil. Now, so with that being said, we come to the speech of the noble Sheikh Muhammad ibn Saleh al Uthaymeen rahimahullah ta'ala. 
when he was questioned about people becoming upset and angry when a calamity befalls them. Shaykh Uthaymeen, rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, Al-Nas hal musiba ala maratib arba. That the people at the time of the calamity, they are upon four levels. Al-Martabatul Ula at-Tasakhut wa huwa ala anwa' He says the first level is the person being upset and angry. And being upset and angry is of different types. Al-Nawr al-Awwal an yakuna bil qalb ka an yasqat ala rabbihi يغتاظ مما قدره الله عليه فهذا حرام وقد يؤدي إلى الكفر قال الله تعالى ومن الناس من يعبد الله على حرف فإن صابه خير اتمأن به وإن صابته فتنة انقلب على وجهه خسر الدنيا والآخرة ذلك هو الخسران المبين سورة الحج The first category of anger is that a person is angry by way of his heart as if he is angry with his Lord and he is mad at his Lord for that which he Allah has decreed upon him this is haram can be angry with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the Shaykh, he says, Rahimahullah, and this can lead a person to disbelief. As Allah, he mentions, if from amongst the people, those who worship Allah at the brink, if some good befalls him, he's at ease, but if some calamity or fitna befalls him, he turns back on his face. This type of individual has lost the dunya and he has lost the hereafter. And that is the clear cut loss. So, here the first category is a person who is afflicted with the calamity and he's upset with Allah for what Allah decreed. He's mad at Allah. Angry with Allah that Allah is testing him with this affair, this sickness, this hardship. This is haram, this is not befitting. Because from the creed of Islam is that we believe that Allah is Al Hakim, Allah is the All Wise. And wisdom, what is wisdom? Putting something in its proper place. So the decree of Allah comes from the wisdom of Allah, the good of it and the bad of it. So if Allah has decreed that you are sick, that's from Allah's wisdom. Also from our creed, we believe that Allah Azza wa Jal he is free from oppression. That Allah Azza wa Jal, He does not oppress His servants in any shape, form, or fashion. As Allah Azza wa Jal mentions in Surah Al-Qaf, verse number 29. وَمَا and I am not one who oppresses the servants. Allah, He negated oppression from Himself. Also, Al Hadith Al Qudsi. Ya ibadi, inni haramtu al dhulm ala nafsi, wa ja'altuhu muharraman baynakum falata dhalamu. O my servants, indeed I have made dhulm, oppression, Forbidden upon myself, and I have made it forbidden upon you, so don't oppress one another. So Allah is a wajali doesn't oppress anyone. So if Allah has decreed for a person to be sick, 
This is not oppression from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon the sick person. So how can a person become angry with Allah, mad at Allah for what Allah has decreed? Perhaps this sickness is from the hands and the actions of the individual. Perhaps the sickness is a sign that Allah loves you. Don't be upset. If it's from what your own hands have caused, repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If this is from the signs that Allah Azza wa Jal, He loves you, embrace it with patience. Ayyub alayhi salam was sick as it has come in one of the authentic narrations for 18 years. Was Ayyub sick due to a sin he committed? Was he sick because he was a criminal? Not at all. It was a test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah raised his status by way of it. Don't be upset over that which Allah has decreed. Al-Nu'thani an yakuna bil lisan kad-du'a bil wail wa ma ashbaha dhalik The second category of anger is that which is displayed by way of the tongue. That a person he makes like du'a for like destruction, oh woe to me, oh, as if they're calling out with words of dis, uh, being displeased with that which Allah has decreed. This is not allowed. Anu'l-Thalith أن يكون بالجوارح قلت من الخدود والشق الجيوب والنفس الشعور وما أشبه ذلك وكل هذا حرام مناف للصبر الواجب شيخ ثيمين رحمه الله تعالى he says in the third category of anger is the anger that is displayed by one's physical action like slapping or striking your cheeks, hitting your face, being angry, ripping your clothing. Your man used to start tearing your clothing, pulling out your hair. For those of us who have hair in it, others don't have hair, but they may grab their heads and as a sign of displeasure, not being pleased with what Allah has decreed. Being angry at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All the likes of that, Shaykh Uthaymeen, he says, Rahimahullah, all of this is haram, and it negates the obligatory patience that the person is supposed to have. Now the Shaykh, Rahimahullah ta'ala, he moves on, to al to thaniya the second level, as it relates to people when they are afflicted with calamities. He says, As-sabru. He says, Wa huwa kama qala sha'ir, Wa sabru mithlu smihi murrun madhaqatuhu. لكن عواقبه أحلى من العصر. He says that patience, it is as the poet has stated, and the patience is similar to its name. Its taste is bitter, however, its end result is sweeter than honey. Masha. الصبر Patience, it is similar to its name. Its taste is bitter. However, the end result of it is sweeter than honey. 
The Shaykh he says, فَيَرَى أَنَّ هَذَا الشَّيْءِ ثَقِيلٌ عَلَيْهِ وَلَكِنَّهُ يَتَحَمَّلُهُ وَهُوَ يَقْرَهُ وَكُوعَهُ وَلَكِنْ يَحْمِيهِ إِيمَانُهُ مِنَ السَّخَطِ He says, the person, he views this thing as being heavy and difficult upon him. However, he bears it. At the same time, he dislikes that it happened. He, don't want to, he doesn't want to be sick. He does not want to be sick. He dislikes the fact that he's sick. He's not mad at Allah. He's not angry at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He just doesn't want to be sick. But his iman prevents him from having hatred and anger towards Allah. Very important point here. This is the lowest level of what's obligatory upon you, upon us at the time of calamities. Now, فَلَيْسَ وُكُوعُهُ وَعَدَمُهُ سَوَاءً عِنْدَهُ وَهَذَا وَاجِبُ لِأَنَّ اللَّهَ تَعَالَى أَمَرَ بِالصَّبْرِ فَقَالَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى وَعَطِئُوا اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ وَلَا تَنَازَعُوا فَتَفْشَلُوا وَتَذْهَبَ رِيحُكُمْ وَاصْبِرُوا إِنَّ اللَّهَ مَعَ الصَّابِرِينَ Shaykh Uthaymeen, he states, however, his faith prevents him from being angry with Allah, but its occurrence or its non-existence, it is not equal with him. And this is what is obligatory upon the individual, meaning to have patience. Because Allah, the Most High, He, he commanded with patience, as He stated in Surah Al-Anfal, and obey Allah and His Messenger and do not dispute lest your power and your might leave from you and be patient indeed Allah is with those who are patient. The Shaykh mentions Al Marutabatu Thalitha. Al Rida. Be an Yahudal in Sano Bil Musiba. Be Haith Yakunu, Wujuduha, Wa Adamuha, Sawa. Fala Yashuku Alehi, Wujuduha. وَلَا يَتَحَمَّلُوا لَهَا حِمْلًا ثَقِيلًا The third level is being pleased with the calamity. Now we're moving up a little bit and as it relates to a person's strength and faith. Everybody's not the same when it comes to dealing with hardships and calamities. So you have those that are angry with Allah. Then you have those that are patient, but they don't want the calamity to be there. Then you have those who are pleased. Okay, the calamity is here. It's the same whether it's there or not. This is the test of Allah. He deals with it. It's not heavy upon him. It's not difficult upon him. The Shaykh he says, وَهَذِهِ مُسْتَحَبَّ وَلَيْسَتْ بِوَاجِبَ عَلَى الْقَوْلِ الرَّاجِعِ Shaykh Uthaymeen, he says, and this is recommended, this is not mandatory or obligatory, according to the strongest view. وَالْفَرْقُ بَيْنَهَا وَبَيْنَ الْمَرْتَبَةِ الَّتِي قَبْلَهَا ظَاهِرَ 
لأن المصيبة وعدمها سواء في الرضا عند هذا أما التي قبلها فالمصيبة صعبة عليه ولكن صبر عليها Shaykh Uthameen, rahimahullah ta'ala, he states, The difference between the two, meaning the third level and the second level, between patience and being pleased, is clear. That is because on the third level, as it relates to a person being pleased, the calamity is the same. Or the matter is the same, whether the calamity is there or not. It's the same with him. Different from the, 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 of the level of just patience, whereas the calamity is difficult upon the person, but the person is patient. The one who is pleased, the calamity is not difficult upon him. He's patient and it's not difficult upon him. That's clear? Now we come to the last level. Al-Martabatu Rabi'ah. Al-Shukr. Wa huwa a'ala al-Maratib. Wa dharika bi an yashkur allaha ala ma asabahu min musibah. حيث عرف أن هذه المصيبة سبب لتكفير سيئاته وربما لزيارة حسناته كما قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وما من مسلم يصيبه أذى مرض فما سواه إلا حط الله له سيئاته كما تحط الشجرة ورقها أو كما قال صلى الله عليه وسلم The fourth level is thanking Allah. And this is the highest of the levels. And that is that the person thanks Allah for that which has befallen him of the calamity. Yeah, this is this is up there. We have some ways to go. <laughs> Allah help us, man. SubhanAllah, we have there. This is some heavy speech here. Shaykh Uthameen, he says, being that the person he knows that this calamity is a means of the expiation of his evil, or it is possible it is the cause of an increase of his good. Just as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned, or the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned, there is no Muslim who was afflicted with harm or sickness or other than it, except that Allah removes his evil for him by way of it, just as the tree sheds its leaves. So this was the answer of a Sheikh Muhammad ibn Salih al Uthaymeen Rahimahullah Ta'ala. And that which is upon us, brothers and sisters, is that we have to have good thoughts. <coughs> about Allah Azza wa Jal. As the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he mentioned, in this hadith, he mentions on Allah Azza wa Jal Al Hadith Al Qudsi. Call Allah Taala. Ana inda zanni abdi bi. Fal yadun bi ma shaa. In khairan fa khair. Wa in sharran fa shar. The Prophet 
the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi mentioned that Allah Azza wa Jal, He stated, I am with my servant in the manner that he thinks about me. So let him think about me that which he wishes. If it is good, he will receive good. And if it is evil, then for him is evil. This narration, it teaches us that we have to have good thoughts about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in order to receive good. Tayyib, you're sick. This is from the decree of Allah. But have good thoughts. Especially when it comes to embarking upon seeking the treatment. Because Allah, He is a shafi. Allah is the cure. The doctor is the means. The medicine is the means. But Allah is the one who cures. So when the doctor prescribes the prescription for you, and you take the medicine, the thought is to be that Allah Azza wa Jal is going to allow this medicine to work and cure me by way of this. Allah, not the doctor. The mistake you find sick people making is that their dependency is upon the doctor and upon the medicine as the cures instead of the means. This is a, a, a serious mistake. Alhamdulillah, the doctors, we are grateful to Allah that we have doctors. Even some of the scholars of the past, they would say, do not go to a land where there is no scholar or a doctor. Because the scholar, he cures your religious sicknesses and the doctor cures your physical sicknesses. So if, you, if there is no doctor or scholar in the place, don't go there. Because you're going to be sick from both angles. <laughs> but you no, know, doctors are important in Islam. We don't deny the value of a doctor, especially a trustworthy, upright doctor who is skilled in the affair of medicine. Alhamdulillah, this is, a, this is something that's a ni'mah from Allah. But the doctor himself or herself is not the one who cures you. The doctor is just the means. The medicine that the doctor prescribes, the advice that the doctor gives, it is the means. Allah at the end is the one who gives the tawfiq. So we have to have good thoughts about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When it comes to embarking upon the ilaj, as our brother Hafidhullah, he mentioned the statement of Allah Azza wa Jal that Ibrahim alayhi salam, he stated, وَإِذَا مَرِدْتُ فَهُوَ يَشْفِيهِ And when I become sick, he is the one who cures me, meaning He Allah. He is the one who cures me. Also Allah Azza wa Jal, He mentions, وَأَيُّوبُ إِذْ نَادَ رَبَّهُ أَنِّي مَسَّنِيَ الدُّرُّ وَأَنْتَ أَرْحَمُ الرَّاحِمِينَ فَاسْتَجَبَنَا لَهُ فَكَشَفْنَا مَا بِهِ مِنْ دُرُّ and Ayyub, when he called upon his Lord, indeed harm has touched me, and indeed you are the most merciful of those who show mercy. Allah, he states, so we answered him, and we removed the harm that was with him, and we removed the sickness. Also Yaqub, Allah mentions that he said, إِنَّمَا أَشْكُوا بَثِّي وَحُزْنِي إِلَى اللَّهِ وَأَعْلَمُ مِنَ اللَّهِ مَا لَا تَعْلَمُونَ And this is a dua, or rather this is Allah Azza wa Jal mentioning the response 
of Ya'qub alayhi salam regarding the calamity that he was experiencing when his son Yusuf went missing. As his son Yusuf was beloved to him, was very dear to him. And losing Yusuf was a calamity upon him that caused Ayyub, Afwan, that caused Ya'qub to suffer. Allah mentions that Ya'qub, he said, I only complain of my suffering and my grief and sadness to Allah. And I know from Allah that which you do not know. Here we have examples of the Anbiya returning their affair back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that Allah Azza wa Jal is the one who removes the sickness. Allah Azza wa Jal is the one who removes the suffering. Allah Azza wa Jal is the one who removes the grief and the sadness. Not the doctor. Not the medicine itself. The doctor and the medicine are from the means which Allah has created. So it's important, Barakallah Fikum, that when embarking upon the means of ilaj, seeking the treatment, that we have good thoughts about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As our brother Hafidhullah, he mentioned the dua of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in which Uthman ibn Abil Aas radiallahu an shaka ila Rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam waja'a yajiduhu fi jasadihi mundu aslam faqala Rasulullahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam da'a yadaka ala alladhi ya'lamu min jasadik wa kul bismillah thalatha وقول سبع مرات أعوذ بعزة الله وأعوذ بالله وقدرته من شر ما أجد وأحاذر. رثمان بن عبد العاص رضي الله عنه. He complained to the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم about a pain that he was experiencing in his body since the day he accepted Islam. And the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told him to put his hand on the place that he is experiencing the pain in his body and then let him say Bismillah three times depending on, upon Allah. And then let him say seven times A'udhu billah wa qudratihi man sharri ma ajidu wa uhadir I seek refuge with Allah and with the might and power of Allah from the evil of that which I find and I'm weary of. Also, Barakallah Fikum, when it comes to the treatment for one's sickness, after turning to Allah and depending upon Allah, it's upon you to embark upon other means also. You don't just make du'a. Du'a is the most powerful weapon or means of removing sickness. But that doesn't mean that you restrict yourself to du'a. As Allah Azza wa Jal mentions, هُوَ الَّذِي جَعَلَ لَكُمُ الْأَرْضَ ذَلُولًا فَامْشُوا فِي مَنَاكِبِهَا وَكُلُوا مِنْ رِزْقِهِ وَإِلَيْهِ النُّشُورِ Surah Al-Mulk. Allah Azza wa Jal mentions that He is the one who has made the earth easy for you to walk upon.
Allah Azza wa Jal is the one who has made the earth easy to walk upon. And this is in regarding to its creation, its slopes, and other than that. And then Allah says, eat from his provisions. And to him, meaning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is the return. What is the benefit from this verse? The benefit from this verse, Barakallah fikum, is that Allah Azza wa Jal, number one, He has made the earth subservient to us. And Allah commands us to go throughout the earth. And as we are going throughout the earth, to take from the provisions that's in the earth. And from the provisions that Allah Azza wa Jal has placed in the earth is medicine. That which is a means of healing. Allah Azza wa Jal, He mentions, and this is in Surah Al Jumu'ah, فَإِذَا قُضِيَتِ الصَّلَاةِ فَانْتَشِرُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ وَبَتَبُوا مِنْ فَضْلِ اللَّهِ وَافْكُرُوا اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ And when the Salah has ended, or is finished, Go about in the earth and seek from the provisions or the virtues of Allah and remember Allah in abundance in order that you may be successful. So Allah Azza wa Jal commanded with going out into the earth seeking the provisions. What falls under this is that a person not just restrict himself to making dua for provisions. But along with the dua, you have to make an effort to attain the provisions. Again, making dua is from the greatest of the reasons of having your sickness cured. But that doesn't mean that you do not do anything else. When Maryam, the mother of Isa alayhi salam, when she was given birth, Allah Azza wa Jal commanded her to do what? To go to the date palm tree and shake it, embarking upon the means to get relief from pain and suffering. It's a lesson. She called out. And she was directed to go to the tree. Wallahi, this deen is beautiful. This deen teaches us the best of mannerisms and characteristics. The next point, Barakallah Fikun, is that when embarking upon the means, we believe at the end that the means will only be successful if Allah wills and decrees it. As Allah Azza wa Jalla mentions, وَمَا تَشَاءُونَ إِلَّا أَن يَشَاءَ اللَّهُ رَبُّ الْعَالَمِينَ and you do not will except that Allah, the Lord of the world, wills. Sometimes you will embark upon the means. Follow the advice of the doctor. Take the medicine that is prescribed. Implementing the prophetic medicines from black seed and honey and other than that. But Allah hasn't decreed for you to be cured right then and there. 
Don't become angry. Do not become angry. Do not doubt what Allah Azza wa Jal has stated and what the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has stated. Rather, the, the belief is to be that Allah hasn't decreed for you to be cured as of yet. Don't stop making dua. This is a mistake of the people. They get sick, they make dua, they take a spoon of honey and black seed, they're not well in the morning, that's it. No more dua, no more honey and black seed. Allah hasn't decreed for the cure to come yet. Do you not remember the hadith of the man who came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam complaining about the stomach ailments? And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to him what? Go take the honey. So he went and took the honey, came back, and complained again. The Prophet told him, go and take the honey. He went and took the honey, came back, complained again. The Prophet mentioned, your stomach has lied and Allah has spoken the truth. Go and take the honey. A beautiful point here from Sheikh Al-Albani, rahimahullah, about this hadith. Sometimes when you take the ilaj, the cure does not come right away. Sometimes when you take the treatment, the cure does not come right away. You have to be continuous and consistent in the taking of the treatment until Allah decrees. So just because you finish one bottle of pills of black seed and your cure or the cure of your sickness has not taken place as of yet, don't stop taking the black seed or don't start having doubts now about the statement of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Alaykum bil habbat al-sawda fa innaha al-shifa li kulli da'il mawt or kama qala Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that upon you is taking the black seed for indeed it is a cure for every sickness except for death. Don't say or don't have doubts now about the hadith because you finished the bottle of black seed pills but yet you're still sick. The Prophet Sallallahu spoke the truth upon us as having patience and knowing that even though we have embarked upon the means at the end the cure is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also we have a narration here. عَنَ بِهُرَيْرَةَ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ أَنَّ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ قَالْ يُسْتَجَابِ أَحَدِكُمْ مَا لَمْ يَعْجِمْ يَقُولْ قَدْ دَعَوْتُ رَبِّي فَلَمْ يَسْتَجِبْ لِي Abu Huraira mentioned that the Messenger صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ he stated that the dua of one of you will be answered as long as he is not hasty. And then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam went on to explain that the hastiness is that the person says, I called upon my Lord, but he didn't answer me. Another narration, لا يزال يستجاب للعبد ما لم يدع ما لم يدع بإثم أو قطيعة رحم ما لم يستعجل قيل قيل يا رسول الله ما الاستعجال قال صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول قد دعوت وقد دعوت فلم أرى يستجيب لي فيستحسر عند ذلك ويدع الدعاء
Another narration, the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said that the servant will not cease to have his dua answered, or the dua will not cease to be answered for the servant as long as he does not make dua for a sin or cutting off the ties of kinship, and as long as he is not hasty. It was said, O Messenger of Allah, what is being hasty? The Prophet was something he said that the person he says, I called upon Allah, I called upon Allah, but I do not see that he answered me yet. So as a result of that, he like he gives up. He stops making the dua. Because he did he, he did not see that his dua was answered when he called. Be aware of this. Continue to call upon Allah. Even if you have been sick for 5, 10, 15, 20 years, still make dua when you're in sujood. Oh Allah, cure me. Still make dua before you make taslim after the tashahud in the last raka of your salah. These are times when the duas are answered. Still make dua that Allah cure you during the time of rain. Still make dua in the last third of the night when Allah descends to the lowest heavens in a manner that is befitting to Himself. Still make dua between the adhan and the iqamah. Still make dua for other sick people outside of their absence. Why? Come on. Wake up. Why? Ahsan. That's how you make dua for yourself. When you make dua for a sick person, outside of their absence, Allah sends an angel there to say, I mean for you to say, Oh Allah, cure my brother from all of his ailments. The angel says, I mean for you to say. Still make dua during these times and in these situations. Don't give up. For the affair is in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The last point and there are many things that can be mentioned. How was our mannerisms to be after Allah has cured us? Our mannerisms should be one of gratitude. If we were sick, and Allah Azza wa Jal, He cured us of this sickness, then it is obligatory that we show greatness or gratitude, excuse me, for this great ni'mah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of health after being sick. Because the Prophet described good health as a ni'mah. نِعْمَتَانْ مَغْضُونْ فِيهِمَا كَثِيرٌ مِنَ النَّاسِ Two blessings that the majority of the people they are healers of. الصُّحَ وَالْفَرَاغِ Good health, free time. Right now, we are in ni'mah. We have free time to sit in the masjid, to listen to قَالَ اللَّهِ قَالَ الرَّسُولِ قَالَ الصَّحَابَةِ قَالَ الْعُلَمَاءِ all the salaf is so. This is a ni'mah that we have some time to sit and listen to something that's going to increase our iman. And it's also a ni'mah that we have our hearing to hear the speech of the brothers who have come, taken out of their busy schedules to spend time with us in our community. It's a ni'mah from Allah. It's a ni'mah here to. Meet new brothers, those of us who we've never met before. This is a ni'mah from Allah. 
subhanahu wa ta'ala, that we have the ability to shake each other's hands and hug each other, welcome each other, to sit and eat with each other. It takes health to do that. And to speak with one another, kayf halik, that's health. It's a ni'mah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the point, barakallah feekum, having good health or receiving a cure or being cured by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after being sick is a blessing from Allah that we must be grateful for. Allah Azza wa Jal, He mentions, Washkuruli wa la takfurun. And be grateful to me and do not be ungrateful. Allah Azza wa Jal, He mentions, Wa if ta'addana rabbukum la in shakartum la azidannakum. Wa la in kafartum in adabi la shadid. Surah Ibrahim. And when your Lord proclaimed, if you are grateful, I will increase you. And if you are ungrateful, then indeed my punishment is severe. You were sick. Allah Azza wa Jal blessed you to be better now. Show gratitude. Number one, with your heart. That the ni'mah of the health after being sick has come from Allah. وَمَا بِكُمْ مِنْ نِعْمَةٍ فَمِنَ اللَّهِ And whatever you have of a blessing is from Allah. Number two, show gratitude verbally by thanking Allah, by praising Allah. Even mentioning the favor to those whom you love, that I was sick, Allah cured me. You go to our brother, and our elder, Shaykh Tawfiq, Hafidhullah, and he shares some knowledge with you that Allah allows him to have of medicine, and then you go and take the medicine, and then Allah cures you. There's nothing wrong with coming back to him and saying, praise be to Allah, Allah made you a means of me being cured. Thank you, brother. But giving the praise to Allah, and then showing gratitude to the help that was given by the brother who was the means. That's for showing gratitude to Allah. لا يشكر الله من لم ومن لم يشكر الناس. He has not thanked Allah if he has not thanked the people. Thanking the people is a part of thanking Allah. That's how you show gratitude. There's nothing wrong if a doctor has helped you by Allah's permission. And that which the doctor prescribed, it was successful by Allah. There's nothing wrong with going and back and say thank you to the person. That's a part of showing gratitude to Allah. And as, as Allah mentions, And as for the favor of your Lord, what? Mention it. But mention it to who though? The people who love you and want good for you. Don't mention your favors to every single people. Everybody. But some people, they are jealous and envy of you. And if you tell them that Allah has cured you after you were sick, they may cause you to get sick again by way of what? The evil eye. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said what? Istainu ala injahil hawaij bil kitman. فَإِنَّ كُلَّ ذِي نِعْمَةٍ مَحْسُودٍ Okay, Maqala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Seek help in being successful in fulfilling your needs by keeping them private. For indeed, everyone who has a blessing, he is envied. And you look at the story of Yaqub and Yusuf. He told him not to tell his brothers lest they plot against him. Also the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that if you, have, if you see in your dream that which makes you happy, tell who? Those whom you love and they love you. 
You don't have to share your blessings with everybody. Now this does not mean that if you embark upon a situation that is a blessing for you, that you keep it hidden from people who are supposed to know. As an example, a sister gets married and there are children involved and she doesn't tell her ex-husband. No, he has to know because he has rights to the children. Don't come quoting these narrations now. And, you know, and this is for who, who you know is who it's for. Don't come quoting these narrations now saying, uh, the prophet said to hide the blessing. No, there's a child involved. The man has to be allowed to take his right. And how many times people have these misunderstandings with these texts. But in any event, we thank Allah verbally. Praising Allah, mentioning the ni'mah to those whom we love and they love us. And lastly, using that favor of Allah in a manner that is pleasing to Allah. You were paralyzed. Allah allowed you to walk again. Okay, walk towards good now. You were blind. Allah allowed you to get your sight back. Look at the halal and not the haram. You had complications in your ears. You had a stroke, you couldn't talk. Now you have your health back. Use these body parts, these limbs for the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when you thank Allah, thanking Allah will be better for you than your health returning to you. Think about that. When you thank Allah for the ni'mah that Allah has given you, that's better for you than the actual ni'mah itself. And this is based upon the authentic narration where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam stated, مَا أَنْعَمَ اللَّهُ عَلَىٰ عَبْدٍ نِعْمَةً فَحَمِدَ اللَّهَ عَلَيْهَا إِلَّا كَانَ ذَلِكَ الْحَمْدِ أَفْضَلْ مِنْ تِلْكَ النِعْمَةً Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allah has not bestowed upon a servant a blessing except rather Allah has not bestowed upon a servant a blessing and then he praises Allah for that blessing except that the praise is better than the blessing itself. Another narration مَا أَنْعَمَ اللَّهُ عَلَىٰ عَبْدٍ نِعْمَةً فَقَالَ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ إِلَّا كَانَ الَّذِي أَعْطَاهُ أَفْضَلْ مِنَ الَّذِي أَخَذَ Allah has not bestowed upon a servant a ni'mah, a blessing. And then the person says, Alhamdu That's how you show gratitude verbally for the blessing. The person says, Alhamdu Except that that which he gave him is better than that which he took. Meaning that which Allah Azawajal gave him of the success to say Alhamdulillah for the ni'mah, it is better than what the servant took of the ni'mah. So when Allah Azawajal favors you with good health after being sick, be grateful. Don't use your health now to go and disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah favored you because he could have left you sick. And he could have made the sickness increase. But Allah has favored you with the cure. Be grateful. Inshallah ta'ala, I'll stop with this. And I pray that that which has been mentioned is a source of benefit and blessings for all. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to cure these sick Muslims and to give them a cure 
from himself that does not leave behind any sickness. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us amongst those who are grateful for the good health that we have. And we ask Allah to give us the success to use our health for that which is pleasing to him. And whatever is correct, the praise is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. Whatever is incorrect, it is for myself. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha ila anta astaghfiruka wa atubika.